and I are thrilled to be with you this afternoon uh, and share our story of Child Safe and how we took a visitor experience approach to hope and healing. Today, we're going to walk you through uh, these six issues. Uh, and you know, for most of you, these issues are probably not uncommon. Uh, just like just like many of the projects that we work on, uh, these six uh, the yeah these six issues are. are really things that we are common and we deal with specifically with our nonprofit clients. Uh, in this case, the, the key was to really understand uh, that, that what, what were the critical issues on, on this specific project. Uh, one, first and foremost, is to identify what the issues and the opportunities are uh, in those paradigms. And then later on, we're going to go through uh, how our approach and design solutions to, to solve for those paradigms, in many ways, reinvent them. But before we do that, we thought we'd tell you just briefly who we are uh, and, and who Overland is. My name is James Lancaster. I'm an associate principal at Overland, and I'm also a visitor experience area leader. What that means is I focus on much of our civic, uh, cultural, and visitor, uh, visitor center work uh, and cultural centers, uh, as well as working with nonprofits. That's a, that's a common theme uh, across all the project typologies that I work on. James and I work together in that space. Um, a lot of the work that I do is in the public realm, as well as him, and I'm a senior principal and, and leader of operations here at Overland. And I just wanted to take a second and talk to you about who Overland is and how we operate, um, as it's very much going to be showcased here as part of this narrative and story that, that's uh, child safe. So image here is, is great because Ken is actually the, the, the woman on the right there with, uh, with the hair. And that's the CEO of Child Safe. And so when we speak to about Kim Abernathy, that's who that is. But um, the human handprint is a, a method that we use at Overland. We're uh, 52 architects and urban designers um, that collaborate together here in San Antonio, Texas, but we work all over the world. And we use this process that we've developed to really measure the success of our projects. And we really think about it in kind of five ways, one for each digit where we think about aspirations of the project being the thing that really points you in the direction you need to go to. Uh, the inspiration, um, the idea of the image, or the, the in this case, you'll hear of us speaking about the beacon of hope, um, and relationships that are surrounding the project, both internally and externally, um, how that then leads to stewardship of the project itself. Um, obviously, that encompasses sustainable strategies and other ideas. And then the well-being of those being affected by the project itself uh, and um, impacted by its shelter. So that's a little bit about how we operate, who we are. Uh, we do think about this quite often uh, in each of the projects, and we're going to share with you the story of Child Safe. Great. So Child Safe, who is Child Safe? They are a nonprofit organization in San Antonio, Texas, and they bring together health professionals, state agencies, law enforcement, and legal teams. Uh, under one roof uh, to provide total care uh, and support for children that are victims of abuse and their non-offending family members. So as James dove into the six elements of the, the what we're calling kind of reinventing the paradigm and you know you, you would think Child Advocacy Center, hmm, how's that have to do with visitor experience? I, I, that's you know, the lens of visitor experience is how we really dive into a lot of our work, just experiencing it through various aspects of how someone would uh, enter the project. And it's uh, a, a typical paradigm we see with a lot of nonprofits um, is the notion of budgeting and thinking about budget versus value. And I think you'll hear that as a reoccurring theme uh, throughout. And that was really uh, important and showed its face very early when Child Safe was uh, selecting a site and really understanding the value of a site. Um, and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's not so apparent, but in this case, the notion was really, it wasn't about connecting, um, it wasn't about uh, distinctly limiting the site, but actually connecting the site to the rest of the city and expanding it as much as possible. Uh, it was really about, the notion of opening it up to everybody, not just the, the very few. And uh, and thinking about how that really set the tone for design was important. So as we're taking a visitor experience approach, the question is, well, who is the visitor uh, for this building and this facility? Uh, initially, you know, obviously you think of the client uh, as the main visitor, but in this case, 
uh, there was there was multiple visitors, not not only the clients, the staff that come to this building every day, the community that that we this this building is located, the neighborhood, but also the broader community, and then lastly the perpetrator. So the what's what may be surprising to many of you is that the individuals that are accused uh, of the crime are actually brought to this facility and are questioned. And when we're thinking about security, a lot of times um, that typical thought as the sirens go by, um, you know, are, are, are law enforcement, they're, um, they're armed guards even potentially, but also fencing and walls um, and cameras and other things that kind of uh, hinder us, if you will, from connecting. And, and in this case, there was a significant paradigm shift for child safe. It was kind of the opposite, the notion that, um, if you feel welcomed, it will feel secure. And I think that's a really important paradigm shift for, um, for any uh, kind of facility, but I think for nonprofits specifically mm -hmm. is to, to kind of ensure that welcoming and being part of a, uh, an environment um, actually makes you secure. So as we got into fundraising, like all of our nonprofit work, we are uh, deeply involved in the fundraising efforts and capital campaigns. But as, as Michael mentioned early on, value was a, a, a sort of a key word used. And so how do you, how do you put a value uh, on, a, on a facility that provides services to children that are victims of abuse? And the interesting thing you'll learn is that in, in many ways we started, uh, instead of establishing a budget for the project, it was solving for the, the problem and the issue and creating a facility that really brought value to the mission of the organization. Uh, and so for us is how do we, how do we take that and act, support the client as a partner uh, in those fundraising efforts? And we'll get into a little bit later how we've, how we've done that. And a key theme that we hear a lot, I hear uh, quite often actually, is the notion of resiliency. Uh, resiliency from, you know, from funds, from sort of ongoing uh, occurrences. And, and I think in this particular instance, it was taken extraordinarily seriously. And uh, we're gonna hit on this, but it's really, Sustainability is at the forefront, uh, but you know, crisis management being uh, what we're having to deal with right now through a pandemic, and then also the long-standing thought of what this facility could be used for, leveraged in the future, and we'll talk more about that as well. Right. So as we got into community, uh, and, and Michael touched on the site selection, we were uh, child, child Save was moving to a, a new home, a new neighborhood, a new community, and so for us. Given, given the type of facility that we were uh, being tasked with designing, we asked ourselves, well, how could we create a facility that was an asset to the community and actually engage welcome the community you know, into, into the building? Is that something that we, we really, to be quite honest, struggled with early on is how do we do that effectively while also balancing several of the other paradigms like security uh, in the process? So as we started off, um, and this is how we, this is an image of our, actually our first day on the project. Um, and it's very much a similar image to any other project that we kick off at Overland. But it's, it's really bringing everyone together, all the voices that need to be heard, including um, the various different departments, partners, um, design team in this instance, also the construction team as well. And what you'll see is we, we kind of pin up uh, on all these post-its all the different thoughts and things and organize them um, in a way that we start to really evaluate those ideas. Uh, and the whole goal uh, of this entire day event is to identify what those things are that need to guide the project and, and clearly uh, state the sort of uh, stakes in the ground. Um, and what we call them is we call them guiding principles. And for Child Safe, these were the six that that team put together uh, pretty quickly within that first week where safety was you know, first and foremost, uh, but also restorative. The notion that it's not only about restoring uh, child safe clients, of course, those children who've been abused, uh, but also those who are, who are being persecuted, um, you know, those uh, staff members who have been uh, damaged in the process of trying to support um, these horrible acts that they have to deal with. Um, and then the, the connection to nature being a, a really important aspect of how this facility, the site, all comes together. Um, sustainable strategies and, of course, 
beacon of hope in the community is a big one. Uh, that one is something that really uh, kind of uh, creates an icon for the, for the building and for the message. Uh, and then ultimately, this needs to be transformational. This needs to be transformational on multiple levels. And these were the six guideposts that uh, were put out there for us to best understand and measure against as we move forward as part of our uh, initial kind of aspirational take on the project. And this ultimately leads, um, leads our team to creating a project mission statement. Right, and so those guiding principles uh, in conjunction with the organization's mission, in this case, Child Safe, to restore dignity, hope, and trust to children traumatized by abuse and neglect. We created a, a project-specific mission statement, and that is the new Child Safe facility will be a beacon of hope that will support total care and restoration for our county's abused children. And these words for all of our projects are critical at the beginning to get the words right and, and what Michael didn't mention is it takes months uh, in earlier phases. Every time we meet uh, as a group, we review these guiding principles and this mission to make sure that the organization as a whole uh, really buys into what we're doing because it becomes the lens in which we, we review many of the tough decisions that, that come with the design process. Yeah, absolutely. So the site uh, located in San Antonio here on the east side um, of downtown area is, is, is right off of what we call Interstate I-10. Um, that's a major interstate that cuts across the United States, dips down through San Antonio and picks us up. And right along that, uh, there is a Salado Creek. And here in San Antonio, we've created a lot of linear parks. And so part of the attraction to the site was that very thing, which was being able to connect this property um, with actually what you see in orange there as a, um, a donation to the city to create a new city park, link the campus uh, to the city park into the Salado Creek Linear Park, Martin Luther King Park, Whitley Heights Sports Complex, uh, and provide this sort of connectivity throughout the city and access to child safe in, in, in so many different ways. Um, and then vehicular access and bus access and pedestrian access are all very much uh, part of the decision-making uh, process to locate it here. As we dived in deeper, um, this is a site plan of, of Child Safe. You, uh, you see kind of the same orientation. So as you're entering the site on the upper right-hand corner, uh, you're able to, to really come in and, and you're really feeling like you're entering a different place. You, uh, it immediately becomes a softer ground. Uh, you're parking in gravel. Uh, you're walking through gardens um, and you're entering a consolidated pathway that enters towards the, the beginning of the building. Let me turn on the, um, the annotation here for, there, you go. there we go. Can y'all see that spotlight a little bit better? Okay. Uh, went away. Went away. Um, so as you're, as you're entering the site, you're really seeing the ability to come down and consolidate along this area and enter the main entrance. Uh, staff park in this area here, the visitors park in this zone, and then law enforcement and any potential perpetrator who has a, uh, they, they come and actually visit with law enforcement, will come into this secured zone here and enter in this area. We'll talk more about the entrances in just a minute. Um, the, the main courtyard of, the, of Child Safe is, is shared by all in all the wings. Uh, there's a healing garden adjacent to what's well, an upper terrace outside the therapy wing. And then there's a ropes course beyond and beyond the ropes course connecting to the new city of San Antonio Park and then the Salado Creek Park. Getting into the floor plan, you may wonder what, what drove the shape of the building. In addition to having a, a beautiful courtyard uh, with, with views to the park to the, uh, to the south, as uh, Michael mentioned, it was important for us uh, and the client for everyone to have close visual and physical connection to nature. And so by, by breaking down the, the scale and the mass of the building is in the way that we did, everyone in the building within a matter of seconds can either um, um, physically um, or visually look out a window uh, and see nature. Uh, also, at entrances, this building has no back doors. Uh, it's it's both, both facing uh, the entry, but also facing the park. And, and given that the client has multiple agencies uh, and partners sharing a building, 
each one in, in some cases had to have their own entrance. So starting with the main entrance, uh, as you can see on your screen, um, and actually all the entrance I might add, um, it, we thought very carefully and choreographed the entry sequence so that people, including the perpetrators, went through a, a decompression uh, before entering the building, the building, much like you would see at a nature center. I guess moving to the left, uh, child, that's the Child Protective Services entrance at the bottom, bottom left of your screen uh, is the law enforcement entrance, which uh, Michael uh, mentioned just, uh, a few seconds ago. And on the far right, we have the, the Youth Center of Texas, as well as the uh, entrance to the multi-purpose room slash event space. The, the, the whole plan, the diagram of the plan centers around a central waiting room. Uh, clients and, and their families uh, can spend hours in this facility as they're going through the, the, the forensic interview, meeting with law enforcement. And so it was important for us to create a space, not only with a, a, a beautiful views to the courtyard, but also a physical connection and it was comfortable. And then all of the, the, the individuals in the, in the multiple agencies work behind the scenes in a way that, that was really seamless as much as possible. As you can imagine, these, these children and families are, are just experiencing a horrific event in their life. And so the goal was to, to, to make it as, as easy as possible for them. Just to, just to give you a brief uh, uh, understanding of what all the colors mean, uh, start, let's start at the bottom left. Uh, it's law enforcement, and that's uh, San Antonio Police Department, Special Victims Unit, as well as Bear County uh, Sheriff's Department. And so as Michael mentioned, they actually do interviews uh, for uh, perpetrators uh, and family members that they think may, uh, you know, may have been aware of the crime um, at this facility. And then uh, moving up the page, the, the green color is where they actually do the forensic interview uh, uh, with the clients. And that involves uh, therapists, forensic interviews, law enforcement, um, as well as others. And then the, the yellow color is Child Protective Services. Uh, this is sort of a, a unique microcosm in the fact that in this, in this suite specifically, you, you have children that are, have been placed in foster care uh, brought here to meet with their, with their uh, paternal parents. And so how do you choreograph the, 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 um, the entrance sequence of that, of having parents and, and foster families come but not, not, not interact? Uh, and so that, that was a challenge that we had to deal with. Uh, moving to the right is the family support specialists. They're, they're that person that, that walks uh, the client and their families uh, through the various meetings and, and interviews throughout the day, that person that stays with them um, and ensures that they get a, a teddy bear or something uh, before they leave. Uh, moving, moving to the other purple this space, this is uh, very much a retail space. Uh, that's the type of environment, but uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a free space. So uh, clients that come uh, that may have been removed from the family uh, may need a backpack, may need a car seat may need a, a change of clothes. This is where they come to get that, uh, but it's not a, a donation station. It's very, it was important from a design standpoint that it was very much like a store, a retail store. Kind of moving down, down the page a bit, you have the Youth Center of, of Texas. So they provide support for children that are uh, sort of victims of, of human trafficking and sex trafficking. Uh, and so we're actually in the midst of, of adding a, a shower to this facility because, you know, something as simple as that uh, is a very important amenity for, 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 the, for the youth that, that move through this place. The last, lastly, I'll touch on just the, the multi-purpose room. Uh, one of Child Safe's, uh, I think, probably most important, I feel like they're all important, but most important is, is the education, the outreach that they do, and, and just the thousands of people that they train every year on how to, how to uh, notice uh, how to observe and what to how to act uh, when they when they believe uh, they've come across a child that's been victims of abuse. And so this is a, a place where they do this, uh, but it's also a place where the community can can use this space. It's spill out into a courtyard, uh, uh, yeah, there in that space as well as well as even connection down to the park. So when the doors are opened and in, in, in fall weather like we're having today, uh, the size of that space uh, is doubled or even tripled. Moving up to the second floor, uh, it's actually very similar to the first floor. It's organized around a, a central uh, a gathering space. Uh, in this case, there's, there's sort of two main spaces. One is a uh, client waiting space for the counseling wing, which is uh, to the bottom right of your page. 
Uh, that actually opens up to a, a garden that Michael mentioned earlier, which provides the counselors another amenity, another opportunity to provide uh, unique and specific care to children and, a, and a, a little sculptural that we design and, and Michael will go into more detail that allow the counselor to a, a space to a quiet space to have a counseling session. The other main gathering space is the staff break area. As, as a design um, element earlier on, it was important to the client that there wasn't um, individual break rooms uh, in the various suites and agencies, that it was important to have a centralized uh, location where everyone can come and, and have a quiet, casual conversation or enjoy a meal together. In the, in the, the thought behind that is, it for me, was an aha moment early on, is secondary trauma uh, is a big issue uh, in, a, in a facility like this. So you have staff members that are, are hearing about these horrific crimes day in and day out. And that's not something they can go home and, and speak to their loved ones about. And so having a space like this allows uh, the staff to, to really counsel to each other and provide support uh, and, and really deal with that secondary trauma. The other spaces on the top of the page is the administrative suite. Uh, it's where Kim's, the CEO's office, CFO, HR are all located. And uh, I'll, do a little, I'll tell you a little story. I remember early on as we were you know, going through programming and, and asking Kim, like, well, you know, what do you want for your, for your office, right? This is the CEO's office. And I'll never forget, she said, I, I just want a window so that I can see every child come and leave. And as they enter and leave, and, and that's all I want. And so her office is right there on the screen so that she can see uh, every family member, every child coming to this facility and then leaving uh, on their road to, to healing. The bottom left is the, uh, the outdoor behavior therapy program as well as uh, the DA's office. You know, obviously there's close connection uh, vertically down to law enforcement. And then another uh, an important amenity for the building is a fitness center, which provides a, a place for um, for the staff to exercise uh, during the day, as well as have a shower and changing rooms uh, so that, you know, sometimes they just need a moment. Uh, exercise is, is, provides a, a great avenue for mental health. And so this is another amenity for the facility that just really provides, uh, provides uh, support for the staff. So as, as we mentioned, you know, fundraising is always an important part of any nonprofit um, effort. And I think uh, it, it's, it, what we see is that it's, it's paramount to ensure that those who are donating their time, talent, and treasure to bring them along uh, in many ways. And I think uh, one of the things we did here with Child Safe, um, this is actually our office on the right, it's a courtyard just outside, which we're, we can see from here. And, we, we threw an event with Child Safe, and it was really the, uh, the launching of the capital campaign. So Harvey Najem, who you see in the VR goggles there, uh, you know, donated his initial $5 million to the campaign and uh, was the largest gift he was able to provide. Um, I think a lot of it was because he was able to visualize and understand what he um, was going to get, that, that this, was, uh, this was going to be not only an amazing facility it was going to be the first of its kind and a model for future child advocacy centers. And so just an important note of uh, keeping those um, abreast and as much engaged as possible, whether it's in VR or whether it's renderings or whether it's simple discussions um, as, as you progress is, I think, a really important mm -hmm. part of how uh, to successfully accomplish projects like these. Right, and so what you see on your screen is, uh, I believe, one of the final renderings we did as we worked with Child Safe through the capital campaign process, uh, which you know went went through construction. And so now uh, we are just now coming up on, I think, a year uh, uh, anniversary of Child Safe opening. And so now we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're going to take you through uh, some elements, uh, some key aspects of the project, uh, and share how we addressed uh, the the various paradigms and and reinvented them. So we've mentioned this upper terrace just outside the therapy wing, and this is a view of it in its final rendition. Um, what you can't tell is this, this, this garden is actually on the roof, uh, so it's a mm -hmm. roof garden. Uh, the sculpture that you see on the right-hand side is something that actually the, uh, a group of, of people from Overland actually designed and built on a, for another facility that was then taken down and then reconstructed and placed mm -hmm. here. We donated our time and effort and obviously the structure itself. 
Um, what's beautiful about it is you, you saw an image earlier of the kids kind of playing in mm -hmm. it and it can, yeah. it can really kind of engage it uh, and be a really lovely spot to have a therapy session or just simply some quiet time. Um, and then this outdoor terrace that is very prominently displayed uh, overlooks not only the healing garden, but beyond into the, the future uh, park that's going to be connected to Solala Creek. Inside that glass is the therapy wing. And this is a view, as you can tell, kind of looking back out that direction. Um, and in here, they have uh, lots of different unique rooms. This one in particular is the art room. Um, so lots of daylight, obviously lots of daylight throughout the entire building, but there's other rooms like the music room where we had to think about things more acoustically mm -hmm. and, um, and ensure that that was appropriately. That's Museum Houston, it's um, And then, uh, you know, there, there's lots of uh, other type of spaces that uh, we're going to share with you. Great. So as, as if you recall, we were going through the plans a few minutes ago and, and showed a couple of the, the gathering spaces. What you see on your screen is the, the, the main staff break area. It's where they come together and again, share a meal or, or have a conversation um, about their day. But as you can see, it has windows looking out over the, uh, to the left over the, the courtyard and into the park to the south. Uh, it also opens up into an outdoor, uh, an outdoor terrace that provides, oh, there you go. Yeah, an outdoor terrace that uh, has steps that, that go down that they can have lunch with. Uh, and opens onto the courtyard. And, and what I might add is, again, the shape of the building was, was strategically done so that um, in many ways, it was much more convenient for, let's say, someone in law enforcement to get to the break area would be to walk outside uh, along a nature trail. Again, about that decompression. And instead of having people just move to the building, we encourage them to use the outdoors um, as a way to just take a break from, from their day uh, and and, and ha have a moment in nature. Yeah, it's important to note uh, the, the three little windows down here at the bottom, you'll see those pop up mm -hmm. from the interior. Those are um, that underneath that landscape stair is is what we call the kid cave. And, mm -hmm. and those windows are right at kid height that they can kind of sit in and nestle in and get mm -hmm. those connections and views to the outdoors. So you'll see that here in just a minute. Uh, but before then, this is that upper level that is a waiting area. It's a mm -hmm. waiting area just outside the therapy wing. So when you have a session uh, that comes up, uh, you and your child would come up to this area and hang out before you come into and meet with a therapist in the therapy wing. It looks down upon the entrance um, that's a kind of secured little vestibule for the main entrance. And it's carpeted. And I've actually seen a father just hanging out on the carpet, shoes off you know, playing with his child, relaxing on the floor. Um, and the CEO, Kim, Kim Abernathy has mentioned multiple times uh, how many more people have been smiling in these waiting areas that she used to see not smiling in her previous. So we, we like to think that that has something to do with the space uh, as we do believe that physical transformation leads to human ones. Um, this, this space, uh, you can tell the kind of faceted ceiling and that really kind of relates to the structure of the roof and and the kind of covering that that provides the warmth and the healing that that um, that represents that beacon of hope that that roof uh, showcases as you're seeing it from the highway or feeling it from underneath um, as you're comforted in these waiting areas this is the main entrance the main waiting area you can see straight away uh, you come in the kids love that kid cave where you can see them kind of hanging out where you have those three little windows. Um, and what's really important about this particular space is it's layered. Uh, it's layered for lots of different ages. Uh, there's the parents grouping, if you will, that you can you can see your child, but feel like you can give them some space and you can give some space for yourself and kind of, um, you know, hold your thoughts and think through things. And then there's also the teenage area beyond uh, where there's kind of a bench seat. And then there's also um, the kind of tabletop that is uh, bar table height, if you will, that has iPads on it. Um, but it's also very much connected to the natural outside. It gives you the best view of the courtyard from this location, uh, and that's very much intentional. As, uh, as we talked about community, there's lots of different ways to connect with community. And I think one of the things that was really important here was the showcasing of art. And so on your left-hand side, you see one piece of art of many that's throughout this facility. Um, this is actually loaned art from the University of Texas, um, San Antonio, um, University of Texas of San Antonio. 
And UTSA really provides uh, art for the community. This is the first time uh, they've done this. And what they've done is they've loaned all the art to Child Safe. Um, they, they will in the future be able to rotate that art out, which is kind of amazing. And you get to see this kind of museum level art here on display. You don't have to go to a museum. It's experience for everybody who, to, who's coming through here. And I think that's a really important gift for everyone who comes through this facility. On the right hand side, you see a timeline um, and kind of a narrative of who uh, was in this neighborhood here on the east side, uh, uh, traditionally a, an African-American neighborhood in San Antonio. And so telling this, uh, this story of the key people that have transformed and really elevated uh, San Antonio's east side and, and knowing that the kids who are coming here can look at that and relate to it. I am from San Antonio. These people built this city. They did these things. And this is also done by the University of Texas in San Antonio. They're a Texas Institute of Cultures, and they will continue to work with Child Safe um, to rotate, rotate this out and showcase other aspects and other neighborhoods in the city uh, to really kind of elevate and connect the, the, the people who get to experience child safe on multiple well, uh, levels throughout the community. And the outdoors just south of the courtyard is a really special amenity. Actually, I say special, it's one of the, it's the only one in the country. So child safe has an outdoor behavior therapy program and where they, they bring family members. So children, siblings, parents, um, and do different activities, uh, ropes course, they go hiking, kayaking, um, obviously off site. Uh, and it, it provides them a way to rebuild trust. Um, and so it's again, at the previous facility, this was this this uh, amenity was like a couple miles away. So they had to, um, you know, had to get in a car and drive where this one is just a few steps from the building. And it's it's a pretty amazing thing. And I'm still waiting on the opportunity to to get to use it. <laughs> no, <haven't. laughs> the the gardens uh, are an important piece, but it's actually it's to zoom out just a little bit here. You know, talking about value and fundraising, uh, one of the things that was really important is to identify for for large donors specifically um, spots in the building that they could leverage um, and and essentially uh, help to to clear clearly identify what's what's a value that they're proposing and bringing to child safe garden the healing garden is one of those things it's a it's a specific landscape um, designed for all the senses and for therapy this this uh, a frame is the entrance to that um, that garden and you can really experience it and it was a really a significant part of how um, you were talking about earlier about how we've dealt with, child safe's dealt with the resiliency um, and, and during crisis and certainly during this pandemic, um, they've been able to shut down portions of the wings uh, because of the way that the mechanical systems were designed um, and really able to sort of focus on those critical moments, those critical spaces like the forensic interviews to ensure that the child um, only has to speak that one more time and that's it. Then they just really are on the path of recovery. Um, they're able to leverage these spaces on the outdoors, uh, the terraces outside, the courtyard, um, and also, you know, ensure that the that this facility is run uh, from a sustainable perspective. So the water harvesting tank that you see in the center of the screen um, is is taking on water from the roof terrace and the roof structure itself, irrigating the landscape, and then we're also tapped into uh, a recycled water line to help with the plumbing um, fixtures in the in the facility. Uh, photovoltaics for lowering energy costs uh, and many solar, so, solar and daylighting uh, strategies to ensure that uh, the views are protected while the heat gain is, is also. Um, so lots of different ways to think about resiliency and, um, and, and how the, the buildings can kind of come together in one. Yeah, and to summarize it all, I mean, in an essence, we, we took this idea of, of, of a, child, a children's advocacy center and a nature center and, and, and tried to blend them together. Uh, in a sort of a, a new one-of-a-kind uh, facility that in many ways uh, has reinvented the paradigm of how uh, we deal with child abuse and neglect in this country. And as we look back at, at this facility being open for just over a year, uh, we've just been overwhelmed with the, the, just the, the kind words and positive responses facility um, ha has gotten from the community and the testimonials that we receive from the various families and, and, and clients that have, have really um, began their, their long road of recovery 
due to, due to abuse. And I'll just share one, one quick one uh, before we conclude. Uh, there was a child uh, that had just came out of a forensic interview. Um, and as you can imagine, the interview uh, is basically asking the, the child to, re to recount uh, this horrific crime that's been committed uh, uh, to him. And it's, it's a very difficult part uh, of the process. Uh, but the child walks out and the first thing he said was, can I have my birthday party here? And, 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 when, and that was just like, I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, it was just, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, early on, we, um, we always say that if, if this new facility can impact one child's life positive in a, in a positive way, this was all worth it. Uh, and so with that, I want to thank you all for um, giving us the time to share that story with you. Yeah, thank you. The, we, we're, we're happy to, to announce also that um, the child have just received a Fast Company 2020 Innovation by Design Award and a Chicago Anthony M Award. Um, and I think one of the things that uh, the CEO, Kim Abernathy, mentions that I always love um, is that the whole goal of this project is to ultimately uh, give mm -hmm. it back to the community. If we can just get rid of child abuse in Bear County, it's designed and ready for that long of a kind of understanding and transformation for the future. And, uh, and I think that's really important. Right. So I'd love to turn it over and open it up for questions. Um, happy to, um, I'm not quite sure how this works. So yeah, happy to expand. Yeah, if you guys please. have any questions, happy to go into more detail. Thank you, James and Michael, very much. Um, yeah, so we have we have a couple minutes here uh, for questions and and uh, um, uh, so feel free to shout them out or put them in the chat. Um, next up is uh, close uh, closing remarks will be in in uh, fifteen minutes or so. And I saw Nicole just put that link in the in the chat thing. But uh, again, we have a few minutes, so fire away, everyone. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what the first question is got what input did the client of child safe have in your process? I would say enormous amount of input. Uh, they were involved from, from day one and throughout the process. Uh, in many ways, I feel like as, as architects, we are, are simply um, putting down to paper the, the ideas of our client. And so, you know, as we were designing and listening, um, you know, part of the, probably for me, the most challenging piece of this project was, is really understanding Child Safe and their program intimately. Uh, they do. They they provide an amazing service, but it's it's really difficult to go into detail and understand why why the different pieces have to be there. And so they were there uh, right alongside of us uh, as we would draw something. We would pressure test it. Does it work? You know, as far as the entrances and the choreographing of movements, uh, we were constantly like testing it and testing it, bringing in law enforcement, bringing in every single. Um, staff member and partner uh, into the conversation to ensure that, you know, we got it right the first time. Yeah, I think, I think also the, the part of the question seems to be it's, it's not just about child safe staff or the CEO, if you will, but the children of, of, of the facility and how they impact the design. Um, I, I think we, we got to speak to um, some of the parents um, and through their words, I think we, we definitely, uh, we definitely felt um, we were inspired to do certain things within the design. And so um, it, it wasn't a lot because you have to be careful about, you know, interacting with, with their clients, but it was enough. Uh, and certainly through, uh, through the staff and through the client, through, through Kim's um, sort of third, third party knowledge, if you will, of the fathers and the parents and the mothers and the children, um, we definitely gleaned more detail uh, of the importance of some of these things uh, and, and, and how we should leverage that as the experience for the children. What other questions might we be able to answer or, or are we out of time at this point? Um, I think we are, you know, we're just, just, over, uh, just over 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so uh, if there are no further questions, again, thank you so much for sharing thank you. and being with us. Well, thank you again.